Hi folks, in this video I want to show you a first and very crude range test for the MLIS system. And uh, what we're going to do is the following. I have here my transmitter with this uh, module here in the back and there's this uh, dipole antenna and this dipole antenna I will have uh, pointing downwards like that, right? And this transmitter is flashed uh, to have an output power of minus 18 dBm. So that's the minimum power of the SX chip. And my wife uh, will hold this uh, copter here, so without propellers, just powered up. You have seen this in a previous video. And here is, is again such a uh, module with a similar uh, dipole antenna, which is pointing up. And also this module is flashed uh, with to an output power of minus, minus 18 dBm. Okay, so that's the lowest possible power uh, which you can achieve uh, with these SX chips, right? So now my wife will take this copter and will move it a bit so that we can see the telemetry, right? And I will then walk down our street. So this on Google Maps, it looks like that. So this here is our, where we're living. And my wife will be uh, around here, right? And I will walk then down the street to the end here. And according um, to this uh, distance, Thing. This is 120 meters, maybe a bit more, but uh, 120 meters, okay? And um, while I'm walking, we will watch on my, look on my transmitter, what it's doing, right? And what I also want to say, I have not made such a test before. So all my tests had been in-house so far or uh, in my garden or something like this, right? So I have no idea what's going to happen. So you will see in life what the current state of affairs is and it can be bad and if we see it's bad then we will have to go with that or it can be good or very good or I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, see you in a second and we're outside. So you have seen the results now and you can make up your own mind uh, whether this was good or bad or whether this was in range or not uh, and so on and so forth. So I leave this really to you. I'd like to make uh, some other comments uh, now on what we had just have seen. And first, simply let's do the math, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, this is of course just extremely rough uh, test but let's do the math. I mean, so if we would for a moment really would want to believe, and I'm not saying that we want to, but just for the sake of fun, let's assume that we indeed 
get a range of 120 meters at minus 80, 18 dBm, right? When this was at 12 dBm, which was the maximum power of this SX chip, uh, which is uh, roughly 10 milliwatts, a bit more, right? This would be then 5 times 6 dBm, so an increase of 32 in range, which would correspond to about 4 kilometers. And um, actually, for myself, I have set a bit of the goal to reach 5 kilometers at this 10 milliwatt setting. So this might not be totally out of range if this has any credibility here. Um, if we go to 20 dBm, then this would be an 80 fold increase in range corresponding to roughly 10 kilometers. Uh, 20 dBm is 100 milliwatt and this probably would be sort of a standard setting, right? Now at 27 dBm, which is the maximum output power uh, of these E28 chips, right? It's 500 milliwatts. This would correspond to roughly something like five, uh, 20 kilometers. And at uh, 30 dBm, which is one watts, which is probably the maximum power which we will uh, have available, this would then correspond to roughly uh, 30 kilometers. And and again, I mean this uh, this really is this just a very very crude. Uh, math right so uh, it's it's not clear if we should believe it or not or something like this but it but it's fun and i must say that i was actually extremely eager um to to do this test and to see the results because um, as i reported earlier somewhere else is that when i'm going from my basement uh, just outside of my 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 uh, my building right it's just a few meters. When I see a drop by 70 dBm, so not 17, but 70 dBm. And I, I, I frankly, I, I was quite shocked to see that, right? I mean, just going a few meters to, and, and you have such a massive drop. And I was a bit confused by that and irritated. And I was also a bit worried and wondered, does this work at all, right? So uh, this test, at least I think indicates that it might maybe some day uh, give something right um i also like to mention two things about here i mean you have seen that we uh, had been on a street right so this is not perfect line of sight so, so you have seen uh, left to the right you've seen all these cars so there had been quite some obstacles in the fresnel zone so in line of sight uh, one would actually expect this to be uh, to work better, right? So that a true line of sight uh, environment should be a, a better environment for this uh, um, transmission. I also should say that I mean, what you have seen here is, is, is was the first test. I repeated this test a couple of times. Of, I think it was five times, if I recall correctly, right? And so this was not the best result. So it's not like that I picked the best. So it was pretty consistent. So. So I have not seen a worse result. Uh, so maybe one or two might have been a bit better. But so, so I think this is uh, not uh, totally uh, just uh, uh, non-reproducible, right? And uh, I'd also want to say that these numbers at least seem to make some sort of sense in the sense that when 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 I look on my transmitter and you have seen that when I'm when we are using this 1980 my, minus 18 dBm uh, the RSSI when the transmitter and receiver are relatively close to each other is about uh, minus uh, 80 something minus something like this right and when I'm boosting the power with these other modules all the way up right when 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 this RSSI is, is something somewhere in the range of 20 or something like this. So, so this is also roughly a 50 dBm difference when, when, you, when you rely on this or trust this RSSI. Value. So the RSSI at 500 milliwatts uh, is, is 50 dBm roughly higher than the RSSI when you start with minus 18 dBm, right? So at least it's it's not inconsistent, right? So I'm, I'm not trying to say uh, that, that these numbers are accurate or something like this. To the contrary, I mean, this is just for the fun, right? Uh, but at least it's uh, not totally inconsistent, everything, right? It's, it's not just obviously uh, nonsense. 
Um, okay. Um, so this, this is concerning this, 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 this Mars thing. And there's then a last set of things I'd like to say, namely that I believe it's possible to improve on this. And this uh, goes like that. So here I show you uh, the, the current layout of the packet as it's sent from the transmitter to the receiver, right? And uh, it, it's, it's a 91 bytes payload packet and it's structured so that it has a header of seven bytes. So there you have the sync word and blah, blah, right? And uh, then there is a packet a part where we have our full resolution RC data. That is four channels of 11 bit RC data and then four one bit channels uh, because they just uh, did fit in there. And I've put also an extra two byte CRC into this packet. And I will come in a second to that why I do that, right? And then there is another chunk, uh, the biggest chunk, which carries the other uh, RC data, so 10 channels of 8 bit data. And then in particular also the serial payload the data, which is 64 bytes, right? And then there's of course another two byte uh, CRC at the end of the packet. Um, so just um, to have said this, uh, you can calculate now the maximum data rate. So this, this packet is sent at 50 Hertz or so, uh, 50 times per second. So we have 91 bytes. So this gives more than 4,000 bytes per second. And then you just break down, uh, break it down to the sealed data. Uh, so in each packet, we have 64 bytes times 50 gives uh, 3,200 bytes per second. So that's the maximum uh, possible data rate uh, with this layout. And just to also have said that, in the reverse direction from the receiver to the transmitter, we of course have a higher serial data because we don't need this uh, RC data, right? So here we get uh, 4,100 bytes per second. Okay, so now with this out of the way, let's talk about why I have added here an extra RC, CRC. And the idea of it's actually came out of observations um, that is as follows. So, I mean, if we have a full packet and there is some disturbance, then the packet will be disturbed in, in, at some place and the whole packet will be invalid. Uh, but this part here of a packet has a much shorter time on air than the total packet. So the possibility that this pos uh, disturbance is in this part should be much smaller than the possibility that the disturbance uh, that the disturbance hits the full packet. So, so what I did is to add the CRC for the RC data and um, such that, uh, and the idea is that we get a higher link quality for the RC data so that the, the probability or the chances to receive valid RC data is higher than the probability or the chances to, to receive serial data. Right? And what this would mean that the RC data should have a longer range than the CL data, right? Because, because at large distance, you still have a higher chance to get this RC data, right? So now, I mean, this, this explanation, so it's, it's of course nonsense. I mean, the situation is much more complicated. I mean, there's forward error correction going on, and I think there's also some data whitening and so on. I mean, so that's, 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 that's nonsense. Um, but what I want to tell is that um, initially I started with a configuration where I was using the internal um, um, module uh, for the RC link, right? So, so the RC link was, was done by the, I, I, I used the internal model uh, module for the RC uh, data, right? For safety, so to say, right? which is also at 2.4 gigahertz. And what I've observed is that this really intruded the lower packets quite a lot. So when I switch on or off the internal module, the link quality is, is markedly different, right? And I mean, this is not totally surprising. I mean, I mean, LoRa is relatively resilient, but, but it's not perfectly resilient, right? And now you have these two uh, things, two transmitters here, very close to each other. So it's, it's not uh, totally... Uh, out of mind that there, where, where there can be a strong interference, right? But what I have observed is that I indeed can get many more valid RC data packets than seal data, right? So, so 
this was the observation I made and when I just tried it uh, to, to make the split and I've seen that I indeed get more of this valid RC data than valid complete packets, right? So uh, even though this picture might be totally a nonsense, right? Uh, I think uh, I have valid experimental evidence that this basic idea to introduce you an additional CRC to get a better chance to get this part of the data that this might work. And what this would mean is again that the RC data should have a longer range than the CL data. So uh, that's the one thing. And another thing I'd like to clearly say is at this in this firmware which I was using now for this test, um, there is no effort of a retransmission of lost CL data. So if a packet seal packet is lost when it's lost right and and um, so this basically really chops the muffling or the stream of muffling messages into pieces right and this is really a stress test for muffling because uh, of how muffling is so i mean muffling is quite good at rejecting invalid muffling packets and this is simply because of the crc right in there so i mean it's very unlikely that a uh, wrong packet is identified as a valid packet, right? So this, this basically does not happen. So there are nearly no chances for false, false positives, right? However, the reverse is not true. Muffling is quite bad at ensuring to catch all the valid packets, right? So, so, so the false negative rate is quite high. high. And, and, and this is because, I mean, it's, it's so to say a, yeah, a design weakness of, of, of muffling. So it, it could have been designed better in this regard. Uh, so what, what this means is that even, so even for only one packet is, is invalid, is compromised, you may actually, or the parsers may lose many more packets. So they will lose even valid packets, right? So because of one bad packet, you may lose several valid packets. And there are standard ways or standard ideas of how to circumvent it or to improve the situation by just writing better parsers or routers. Um, but this never had been done. I mean, I'm not aware of any available firmware or project where, where, where such a better parser would have been used, even for the idea how to do that is, is pretty obvious and pretty uh, old and, and, and so on and so forth, right? Now, the bottom line of all that is, I mean, I'm working on both of the things. So I'm working on, on implementing a retransmission of the CL data. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is, is uh, to give every CL packet two times a chance to be transmitted, right? And this will, of course, uh, reduce the average bandwidth, but uh, I believe or hope that this really will significantly improve the link quality in terms of lost CL data, right? And the idea is, of course, that when you have a better, more robust link, uh, that you can go a bit further out in range, right? And the second thing is to write such a parser which, which uh, minimizes the chances that we lose valid packets. Um, uh, that's 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 also on my uh, my list to do. Uh, so I, I think so. Where um, so what this means would be when what you have seen in this experiment, if this would be uh, the current case, there is room to improve the situation here. And I think this was everything I wanted to tell you. So uh, thanks for your attention, and as usual, have fun, and hope to see you again. Bye bye.